This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is part two on creating classes using the card game class suite. The first class we'll look at is the card class. It represents a single playing card. This class we will not have setter functions because we want to keep things as simple as possible. This type of a class is said to be immutable. Once you construct an object, it's going to be that way. And that's how a card would be. When you have a card, it's not going to change on you. It stays the way you, you get it. Here, right here, are the key coded values that are used internally in this suite of classes. Deck values are 1 through 52, and the cards are organized, assigned numbers, all the clubs first, then the diamonds, the hearts, and the spades. The face values are the actual value on the card going from 2 to 14. The jack, queen, king, and ace being the 11, 12, 13, and 14. And the suit values 1 through 4 in alphabetical order. Down here we have some static final constants. They can be used without an object of the class for the different suit values. Here's some suit names that are going to be used in the output of the class. Now I, I want to say that <clears throat> this notation with the square braces here is arrays. There will be a number of arrays used in this suite and array list. If you haven't learned about arrays or array list yet, don't worry about it, but it is good to see these things because you can kind of understand how they work. An array is just a collection of, you know, the same kind of a thing repeated and don't get distracted by that. What you should be focusing on here is about that these are an example of classes and how they are organized and get sort of a basic idea of creating classes. So our first class here, again, we're in the class, and we're in the data members. That's what you have first, the data members of the class. We have some more static final constants, face name constants, and here are the key private data members for a card, its deck value, its face value and its suit value. That's the key information that's that's private and that is what's encapsulated by all the other functions in the class. But that's what makes it work, what makes it what it is. There's a constructor that takes a deck value and we're going to be guarding against invalid state. If they try to pass a deck value as a parameter that's invalid here we will throw an illegal argument exception. If you don't know about exceptions, just understand that throwing an exception of this kind is going to cause the program to crash, and we want to do that on purpose, rather than take an invalid value that may allow the program to run a little bit longer and then crash, then you'll be removed some distance from the root cause, and it makes it harder to find the problem. So we're going to have these kinds of guard code in several places to stop that from happening. And then we're taking a deck value here, so we as assign the deck value, which comes in as the parameter, to the deck value in the class itself, in the object. That's what the this keyword is for there, this dot deck value you have to understand how this works. When you have a parameter with the same name as a data member of the class, the parameter name here, deck value, hides the, the data member name within the function in which it's being used. So you couldn't refer just to deck value itself. That refers to this parameter. To get the one that's up here, you have to use the this keyword with the dot operator that says for this object, this data member, the, this dot. And that's an important thing to understand when you're building um, your classes and you want to use the same 
name in your parameters because it's a natural thing to do rather than having to give these different names. It's just a, makes a whole other set of names. But you have to be careful uh, not to mess up. Then we set up the face value and the suit value using the two face value and two suit value static functions. Passing in the deck value. The next constructor takes a face value and a suit value pair of parameters, has some guard conditions, and sets those up in a similar manner, and this time has to call a function to get the deck value. Here's the equals function to compare this object with another object to see if it's equal. And this is the standard way to do it. You have an object parameter. I'm calling it other. And the code says if other is not, that's the not operator, not an instance of card, that means it's not a card object, then they're not the same. We return false. Otherwise, we know it is a card, so we take other and it explicitly typecast it to a card. That's what that does right there. Assign it to a card object called card other. And now we can, since we have a card and not just an object, we can access the card data members. So here we say if deck value, that's our deck value in this object, is not equal to the card other's deck value, there's no way they can be the same. We return false. Otherwise, we return true. And notice we do not need an else there because when you return false, you're out of the function. The only way you can get here is if you did not return false there. And that means we'll just return true. Here's a, a getter function returning the deck value, get deck value. A getter function for the face name and the face value, the face name one has to look it up in the face names array. There's the square brackets. It's an array. Arrays are indexed zero relative. And since face values start at two, we have to subtract two from the face value to index into the array to get the face name. Suit name, getter function. Similarly there, suit names start at one, but the array starts at zero. Get suit value. Here's a static two deck value and the static to face value functions. It's not important that you understand all the details of every function. What is to be understood here is that we have the data first in the class, then the constructors, then the functions, and it's best to put the functions in alphabetical order so you can find them easily with the constructors first, since that's what you want to see is how the thing's created right off the bat. Here's the two string functions. This two string is the more verbose version of it using the face name and the suit name. The brief two string, the difference there is for the cards, the jack, queen, king, and ace, it doesn't print out their whole name. It just takes the first character of their name to use to get a briefer version. And also another key difference here is that this string, the two string here, well this is the card one, it's, it has the of, get face name, so it will be like seven of diamonds, whereas on the brief down here, it just puts the, the face value and the suit together without the of between them. It would be easier to understand this when we run the program and look at the output when we run the test program to test this. Finally, there's another static function here to suit value. So this is the card class and we have a card test class right here that will test out the card class. It has a main method and it's, it instantiates an object of itself and then calls various test functions in there. We're going to look at all those test functions. First, to string. It will go through in this function with a for loop from 1 to 52 and here's a constructor for a card using the deck value 
and then it'll take the card and do a two string on it and every thirteenth um, iteration of this loop this is the modulus operator the remainder upon division by thirteen and when that's zero that means it's every thirteenth we'll do a, a line break that will separate the suits we have a card two string brief that will print out all the brief two strings for the cards a card two deck value we'll be going through and testing out the two deck value function a card equals will create two cards that are different different deck values and compare them and two cards that are the same and compare them and this illegal arguments tries to put in a 53 for a deck value we'll try that at the end so going up now we're going to run this card test to see what happens when we try out the different functions in our card class here's the output from the test first the cards two string these are all the verbose two strings the regular two string function notice two of clubs all the way through ace of clubs then the break the diamonds are next hearts and spades here's the two string brief notice that they're all streamed out on one line with spaces between them and the breaks here are also every 13 by the output so the two string brief just prints out like a 2c that's two of clubs or a 5h five of hearts it's a, it's a brief version of the cards, a compact notation, which is convenient many times. Here's the card to deck value. So for each card, we're showing its deck value. Notice that the deck values go up from 1 through 13 for the clubs, and then 14 through 26 for the diamonds, 27 through 39 for the hearts, and 40 through 52 for the spades. <clears throat> resizing the window a little bit we can see the end of the output down here on the equals test king of clubs is not equal to king of diamonds but ace of spades is equal to ace of spades let's go back to our our code now we're going to run that illegal argument test we're going to uncomment this test case here that will try out illegal arguments and then we'll go ahead and recompile and run the test program again. Here we see the results. We commented out the, the other test cases and just ran the illegal arguments one. And you can see here that it gets an exception. Illegal argument exception. Main illegal arguments. And then initializing a card at a certain line. It tells you what line the problem is occurring at. And we'll go back again to our code. So back in the card class, we do see that it's a immutable class. It represents just a single playing card. And we've looked at the various constructors, standard functions that are available, the get functions, the two functions that convert things, the equals function. Before we uh, leave this class, we'll look at it in the class diagram one last time. So here we see the card class that we've just talked about, looked at the code, looked at the test program that exercises the, the card class. In the next tutorial in this series, we'll be looking at the card hand class.